I want to talk next about capturing design intent. So we've talked a little bit about just generically about the constraints and you saw the variables and how you can start to capture um, some rules that go along with the geometry. Now, design intent is exactly that. It's the intellectual arrangement of the features and the dimension of a design. It controls the relationship between those features. Just what you saw earlier, the dimensions pretty much drove how that would look. The intent of every single component in our design needs to work as a solution to whatever your design problem is. And here's an example. We have a simple tank, okay? But our design rules that we might have state that the wall thickness, the thickness of this tank that you might see right here in the, in the section, the thickness of that wall is dependent on the length of the tank or volume or some other factor, okay? We used the length of the tank, the dimension that you see along the top. Okay, it's 1.5 or 1.4, whatever it is. And we need to, as we make changes to that tank, if someone was to come in and change that and say, well, this is really two meters, that's what we need. We need the thickness of the wall to actually change. This is one 3D profile. It's been, uh, well, it's been revolved. And the thickness has a variable tied to it that's driven by these variables that you see here. This is a good example of the way design intent is captured and it's added into the model itself. And then you can use the design equations in the form of the variables, make changes to it, and so on. All right, let's jump in to MicroStation. Let's... So this is our what you saw on the slide. All right, this is the tank, the 3D geometry that defines the tank. This is how it's laid out. It's 1.4. That's the size. Our thickness now is 5 millimeters. Okay, so let me fit that just so you can see it. And what we're going to do is uh, actually, you know what, let's go to the top view so you guys can see the original profile. So just so you know, what you know, what did this start with? Again, if you remember the glyphs, it shows us our feature tree. We can go over to our properties and see, hey, this started off with a solid revolution, started off with a profile, it was revolved, and then we did a shell to remove the inside of our tank. And therein lies the thickness that we see over here. So I'm going to pick the profile itself that it started off with. If I zoom out, and remember that these dimensions that you see here as you zoom in and out, as you were to select it, they change. They are a glyph. They are a, um, uh, these little glyphs and, and the dimensions that you see here are um, markers. We can see right here. We can turn on or off things like the constraints to be able to see them. Okay. Uh, here, maybe we want them to display, let's say, all the time. Let's select that so we can click on it. There we go. There they are. Um, I want to make a change now to the length of this. All right. Let's go through the variables real quick just so you can see what's happening. All right. We have a length. That's what gets defined. That's this distance across here in the X direction. Everything we see here is derived from that, that length. So the dish then, again, um, let's open this up so y'all can kind of see it, is that we have the length. The length determines this right here, the dish end that we see here. Okay, That determines distance one, which is the distance that you see here, Okay, from here to here. Okay, Then we also have the radius one, which is that location right there that's based on the distance itself. So the dish end is based on the length, the distance one, dish end. Radius is based on the distance, so pretty simple model here. And then lastly, the tank thickness is determined by what the length is. If we look, there's three options, one for 5 millimeters, 10, and 15. And what this tells MicroStation is that anything less than 1.5 meters will use a 5 millimeter tank thickness. Anything that is, put my cursor over the top so you can see it. Actually, this is in what's called the expression builder. I drag that out so you can. See that a little bit better. Anything that is greater than 1.5 but less than 2.5 will be 10 millimeters. And then lastly, anything over 2.5 becomes 15. Okay, so real simple. We just have three different uh, tank thicknesses. In past versions, how would we have done that if we wanted to create all three of those and if we need to change between all three? 
we literally would have to create all three of those tanks. Okay? There wouldn't be a good way to do that. Could we modify the tank? Could we? Yeah, we could. But again, it certainly wouldn't be as fast as just changing the length. So here, let's do this. Let's change it. We're at 1.4. Well, we learned that anything less than 1.5 is going to be 5 millimeter. But 10 millimeter thickness is anything over uh, 1.5. So let's make this. Let's come in and change this. I'm going to change this to 1 meter 600. So 1 6, that's what we'll change it to. You'll notice immediately that the tank in view 2 updates. Everything else you see in section A and over here are references. So I'm going to click in the view and I'm going to force the, the, uh, the update of the uh, uh, visible edge cache. And you can see that it changes, it updates. Okay. Same thing over here on the uh, sheet. I'm going to click inside it. I'm going to force that update, and you'll notice that this changes to 1.6. So nothing magical here, right? These are things you do every day, is that this 1.6, all we've done is update some 3D geometry. But if I zoom out, let's zoom into our tank thickness, this dimension that's here, and you can see it's a dimension, does what? It says that it's 10 millimeters, all right? We do that again, just so you can see how that, how that works. Again, let's change this back. Let's go to four, and based on our tank thickness, what should that be? It sh we should see that be half and drop down to five. So I'll do one four. You'll see uh, the view number two automatically update. We'll force section A to update, and you'll see this suddenly change to five millimeters. Pretty cool is that the geometry drives, the, I, I should say the variables drive the geometry. And lastly, this probably won't even fit on the sheet by the time I'm done with this, but let's go to the length and let's change this to uh, like 2.75. Let's make it quite large. So we'll really update it. Doesn't even fit in the view anymore. We'll fit it. Again, we can update this view. And you'll see it even cuts it off, right? It's off the sheet. So like I was saying, it, it doesn't fit. But if we look, it's 15 millimeters. Okay. And again, this is showing the old 1.6. Let's update that. And yeah, there's our tank right there. It doesn't fit on the sheet anymore because we've modified the size of it. All right. So um, the big thing here is just know that the design intent that we have, these variables can capture the intent of the designer, of the engineer, to modify that wall thickness. It lets you spend more time on what's important, the design of it, rather than to create, in this case, a tank that anybody could go in and modify and change and end up with something that's just not possible. You know, we really wouldn't want to see a, a tank, for example, that was 2.75 meters and have a wall thickness of 0.5. We have to have that design intent, those rules tied to the geometry. That's what uh, this allows us to do. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.